Okay, here we go. SAO2 episode 23, I believe. And if I'm not mistaken, the next episode is supposed to be the last one of this season. So who knows where it's going to go because this seemed like a decent ending to the, se to the season. So I don't know what they're going to do for next episode. Anyway, like I said, this is a good episode. And it really tugged at your heartstrings. It really did touch your emotions. But at the same time, I have to question as to what the moral is. Um, anyway, it starts off with, you know, my theory being correct in the fact that Kirito used that little tiny robot to allow Yuki to experience school. Uh, not in the usual sense, but, you know, she can actually see what Asuna sees, you know, what's going on. And I kind of question as to everyone be just being accepting of this. I mean, at first I'm thinking, it's cool, it's a little robot that can, t you know, speak, you know, she can do everything. She can see everything they're doing just from this tiny little robot, but at the same time, they treat it like, oh, like, oh, that's normal. You're like the third transfer student we've had that's gone through this. It's like, um, okay. But, you know, it's just, you know, get the story out, you know, faster and really push towards uh, the kind uh, nature that this school is supposed to bring to Yuki. She deserves some kind of kindness. And really, I'm willing to excuse the unbelievability of the situation. But still, it's just a nice moment that... I can't hate it. I can't question it because it'll just ruin the illusion that Yuki has this nice, you know, introduction to what school life for her would have been like. And it's all the more sadder when you get to the near the end of the day where she's realizing, you know, I'm not going to live to be married. I'm not going to live to see this house again that I grew up in. I'm not going to live to, you know, make all the friends I could have made. And it's just so sad. It just... You know, they're talking about future plans, joking around like it's no big deal. But at the end of the day, ouch, it really hurts that she's going to die. I really don't want her to, but it's an inevitab inevitability, you know. But that's the point of this episode, to really make you feel for these characters. And I really do. It makes me wish that, you know, the rest of the season was just this amazing. Instead of just the... Uh, basic generic action and Kirito being awesome, you know, stick they've been going for since the first season. But here we're back to form of, you know, getting your emotions riled up and just really getting you invested in these characters and their stories and really just making you wish they had, you know, been successful at achieving their goals. But, you know, enough of that. You know, we get to the second half of the episode, which is Asuna reconciling with her mother. Now, at first... Uh, I kind of, you know, found it sweet and nice, you know, they're back, they're both in the virtual world in Asuna's little home cabin, and, you know, they're watching outside, it's snowy. Now, usually it's supposed to snow during Christmas time, now, because, you know, that's the part of the game, you know, you know it goes through the seasons and stuff like that, but I guess, uh, you can also change how it looks outside your window to make it snow, again, I don't know, it might be Christmas time outside in the real world, but who knows? Uh, and anyway, you know, they have these flashbacks about grandma and grandpa. And I got to say, uh, child Yuki is just adorable. Uh, child Yasuna is just adorable. And, you know, going through, you know, her mother's past as to she left the village to become successful in the city. And just, you know, become a celebrity of sorts. You know, it's just uh, her backstory, pretty much where she came from. And at first, I'm willing to accept the moral, which is, you know, we both have to listen to each other and you have to see um, from both our viewpoints. But after it ended, I started thinking it almost made it seem like Asuna always was in the right. Like she already knew what she was going to do with her life. She already knew, you know, what was the right path for her to take. And that kind of, you know, sits badly with me. Because it's the same cliche I've seen in so many other shows where supposedly the child of the family already know is in the right, already knows the secret to happiness and a, su a successful life while the parent was always wrong and they didn't know any better. It's like, uh, since when does a 16, 17 or even an 18 year old know, you know what they're going to do for the rest of their life? Where are they going to go for their futures? But, you know, again, that's not the point of this episode. It's just to make you feel for the characters. And again, it succeeds at that. Uh, although I will say that they kind of reach a compromise. Like, neither of them were ultimately wrong or right. Because at the end, uh, her mother asked her, You said you wanted 
to support someone or support people for the rest of your life. You know, that's the kind of person you want to be who makes everyone around you happy. In order to do that, you have to get your grades up. You have to go to university and actually, you know, get a career. So and I guess in a way, she's kind of repeating herself from you know, the first couple of episodes where everyone was calling her a bitch for being her rude. But here she is doing the same thing. But now it's right because Austin is kind of agreeing with her. But at the same time, I guess it's more of the tone of voice, you know, in the environment. And they're now on equal ground sort of thing. So I guess it's more of the situation that makes, you know, someone either a good person or makes someone seem more of a heartless shrew. But anyway, uh, this was a great episode. And I just love these characters. I love seeing them go through turmoil, you know, and still being able to come out happy. Like Yuki said, sometimes it's okay to act, you know, like you're happy because it just means you smile more. Even if it's not real, that smile can infect other people. It could cause other people to think, you know, everything is happy. Even if it's for a small amount of time, you create the illusion of a happy environment, a happy home. And some people might disagree that that's not the way it should be, that you should have real happiness. But really, when you think about it, how do you know you have real happiness? How do you know you've achieved true happiness? Because really, what makes people happy is subjective. Some people are happy with money. Some people are happy with friends. Some people are happy with, you know, playing a game while some people are happy going outside, you know, working all day. It's just subjective. No one can agree on one set of, you know, happiness. And I like that they achieved that in this episode. That they both have their dope, different views of how to make a you know, good life and how to live and just what makes them happy. Um... But I also have to say that even her mother kind of was working for everyone around her. She never seemed happy with her life. But at the same time, you can kind of tell she was working her butt off to give Asana a chance to have a better future. So in that sense, she was doing the same thing Asana wants to do, supporting the people around her. She wasn't doing this for herself. She just believed she had to do this to create a better future for her family. So again... I kind of like how this episode didn't emphasize that one person was right or wrong. It was just different uh, points of view. And I really appreciate this show for doing that. Uh, like I said, great episode. I loved it. And I can't wait for the next episode, even though I can't really you know, predict what's going to be about. Maybe there's some more scenes with Yuki and maybe it's her final death scene. I mean, if that was how it ended, wow, that'd just be just an arrow through the heart i mean really if you ended with yuki dying damn that just be both um poetic but at the same time very cruel because who wants to see a 15 year old girl die in a show it just it just like it really hurts us but again it might be a beautiful you know death scene for yuki final uh, final resting so to say you know rest in peace sort of thing i have no idea so uh I'm Tony Dragon. I'm excited for the next episode. Till then, see ya.